Well, good Thursday evening to everyone watching tonight, and uh, welcome. And thank you so much for tuning in, and uh, looking forward to a good Bible study tonight. Hope everybody's had a great week so far, and uh, we've had a good week here at the church, and uh, just beautiful, beautiful weather we've had this week, uh, good fall weather, and uh, I hope you're doing well as well. Well, we have been looking at 27 keys to 27 books. This actually, since I have been doing this since COVID started back in March, this is our 50th episode. I was looking there on my YouTube channel of uh, different Bible studies that we've done, and uh, we are at 50, number 50. And so we are 27 keys, 27 books, and we've examined the first 18 keys from Matthew all the way to Philemon. So today's our 19th book of the New Testament that we're going to introduce and look at uh, the, the key verse of, and there's eight more weeks left in 2020, so there's eight more books of the Bible to go. And we are in Hebrews. We're in Hebrews tonight. So Hebrews can be a very challenging book because Hebrews is the book that links the Old Testament to New Testament, it talks a lot about the Old Testament imagery, but it points right to Jesus Christ. Uh, Hebrews receives less attention by preachers and teachers than other books of the New Testament, but I love it because it contains one of my favorite passages of all, this, all the Bible there in Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, the great race of faith and the great application based upon the superiority of Jesus Christ. But this book of the Bible is rich in history. It is uh, vibrant in its imagery. It's eloquent in its style. And once this book of the Bible is grasped and it's applied, it refreshes our minds and it cleanses our souls and it keeps our focus there on Jesus Christ. So some things about the book of Hebrews. Once again, this series is to help whet your appetite to read each book of the New Testament. And just some things about each book that I want to introduce and kind of give the, the key verse of. But the, some things about this book of Hebrews. Uh, the writer is not known. Uh, I've done many uh, research projects trying to figure out who wrote Hebrews. I'm sure several other people have, but... The writer is not known. The only book of the New Testament that we do not know the writer of. But he's a very smart guy, inspired by the Holy Spirit. The audience, Jewish Christians. The topic was encouraging them not to give in the temptation, but to, uh, to that, that temptation to abandon their trust in Christ because of the pressure of persecution and because their, of their, their attachment to the Old Testament law. Uh, they were in, in those moments, they were... Uh, the, the temptation was to revert back to Judaism. Don't give into that temptation, the author of Hebrews says, but to focus on the superiority of Jesus Christ because he is better. Christ is better. The theme is God's revelation in Christ is better, superior than the revelation that came to the Old Testament law. The purpose of the book is to show the superiority of Jesus Christ and Christianity to warn those who had trusted Christ of the dangers of falling away, of drifting so the overall theme of the book is Jesus is superior. And you see that throughout the book of Hebrews. And you know what? Chapter 1 of Hebrews sets the tone for the entire book of, that, of the book of the Bible there. It's, Hebrews 1 has such rich doctrinal truth just in this chapter on the person, the work, the superiority of Jesus Christ. A good outline for this book of the Bible in chapters 1, 2, 3, and 4, you, we see that Jesus Christ is superior in his person, meaning who he is and what he has done. Throughout chapters 1, 2, 3, and 4 of Hebrews, you see that Jesus is better than the prophets. He's better than the angels. He's better than Moses. He's better than Joshua. He's even better than the Sabbath because he is our Sabbath rest. He's better than other priests. He is superior in his person because of who he is and what he has done. The second part of the book, from chapter 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10, Jesus is superior as our high priest. Not only who he is and what he's done, but what he's doing now at the right hand of the Father, interceding for us as our great high priest. That's the purpose of his ascension. He's greater than the earthly priesthood in the Old Testament. He's greater than the Old Covenant or the Law of Moses. He's greater than animal sacrifices that pointed to him someday. He's greater than daily offerings. He's superior as our high priest. But then chapters 11, 12, and 13 is the practical, the application for us as believers based upon the person and the work of Jesus Christ. Jesus is superior so that we can move forward for him by faith. 
Chapter 11 talks about faith. Chapter 12 talks about hope. Chapter 13 talks about love, faith, hope, and love, the tenets of Christianity. He is the source of faith to trust God there in that great chapter, the heroes of the faith in chapter 11. Chapter 12, he's the source of hope for us to endure trials. Chapter 13, he's the source of love to encourage others. Everything has its source in Jesus Christ. He is superior. What an awesome book. And what I love about Hebrews, Hebrews was written to Jewish believers in Rome during Nero's persecution of Christians in 65 AD after the great fire of the city of Rome written in terminology that these Jewish believers would have understood. It was written to encourage them not to fall back into their legalistic ways due to persecution, but it was written as an excellent New Testament commentary to the Old Testament. What I love about this book of the Bible is the underlining theme that Jesus Christ is superior. Now think about that for just a second. Chapter one sets that tone. We looked at the whole book as far as a summary, but think about this tonight. Whatever trial or turmoil you may be dealing with, Jesus Christ is superior. Whatever pressure you're faced with, Jesus Christ is superior. Whatever ridicule you may face due to your faith, Jesus Christ is superior. Whatever problem you're dealing with today, Jesus Christ is superior. Whatever feelings you're struggling with today, Jesus Christ is superior. Anytime craziness goes on in our world, I get up every morning, the sun rises, and I know Jesus Christ is still on the throne. He's superior in my heart. I hope he's superior in your heart and in your life. And so this is tied into that application in Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1, 2, and 3, where we run our race with patience, laying aside every weight, laying aside pressure, looking into Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, and considering him. Christ alone is enough. He is superior to our greatest challenges and our lowest despair. Hey, he knows you intimately. He cares about you deeply. And he has the superior power, wisdom, and love to save you completely. Do you know him as your savior? In light of this, as you run this race of life, don't let the temporal seem bigger than the eternal because Christ is enough. He's superior. And when we lose sight of that great salvation, when we begin to take Christ for granted as believers, when we start to focus on the temporal than the eternal, as Hebrews 1 so vividly describes in Hebrews chapter 2 verse 1 warns us, we begin to drift. Actually, I gave you that outline of Hebrews, how Jesus is superior, but there are five warnings in Hebrews, five warnings to believers where the writer gets off the main train of thought through the book to warn believers. There's five warnings throughout that book. In chapter two, verses one through four, there's a warning for us as believers to pay attention lest we drift, lest we backslide. Chapter three, verse seven, to chapter four, verse 13, it tells us to beware of a hard heart because sometimes life can cause that hard hardness. Chapter five, verse 11 to chapter six, verse 20, don't stray from the path of spiritual growth. Chapter 10, verse 19 to 39, stand firm in the faith or be judged by God. Chapter 12, verse 25 through 29, don't turn away from him. Five warnings throughout that book. Take heed, pay attention, beware. Keep your eyes focused upward on the superiority of Jesus Christ. He must be the number one priority of your life. The stakes are too high and your salvation was bought at such a great price. So we must pay attention to stay anchored in the word and in the Lord so that we don't drift and backslide spiritually. So after seeing this outline of the book, as well as the warnings contained in the book, this leads to our key verse of the book, the, 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 the verse that, that just unlocks the entire book and that of the superiority of Jesus Christ, Hebrews chapter four, verses 14 through 16. So let's read this together if you have your Bibles. Hebrews chapter four, Verses 14 through 16, it says this, Seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. What an incredible verse right there. 
So the author there in, in Hebrews 4, 12 and 13, the author has just finished talking about the fact that God's word is like a two edged sword. It does surgery there in Hebrews 4, 12 for the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two edged sword piercing even into the division of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and as a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So he's just finished talking about the fact that God's word is like a two edged sword that does surgery. God's probing truth functions like a body scan. It, sh it, it shows uh, a scan exposing the details of our deepest feelings, our deepest desires, our deepest instincts, our passions, our motives. And then it does work correcting what's wrong. Like surgery, it really hurts. There's a lot of pain in surgery, but the long-term gain is health and healing, spiritual health, spiritual healing. So who is this great physician that holds in his hands the word of God and that can bring healing to our souls? The answer is found there in our key verse, Hebrews chapter 4, verses 14 through 16. Christ has been the theme throughout the book, and this all points to our great high priest who's passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. In the Old Testament, the high priest of Israel interceded for the nation on behalf of the nation to God. That was a symbol and a picture of what Jesus Christ would do when he died on the cross, rose again and ascended. Jesus became our high priest. We trust in him as savior. And when God sees us, he sees Christ in us. That is the power of what Jesus came to this earth to do. So is Jesus, the word of God incarnate, the one who bears the blade of the inspired word of God, not as a sword to punish, but as a scalpel to heal us by de delving deeply into our lives to uncover our thoughts, to uncover our intentions. He can strengthen our confession of faith and lead us into the spiritual rest God has made available to his people. There, Hebrews 4.11. But in this key verse, we see Christ's two natures. The fact that he was 100% man and 100% God, his full deity and his full humanity are displayed in this verse. And this unlocks the entire book to say that Jesus Christ is superior. In verse 14, we see his deity. Notice what it says again. Seeing then that we have a great high priest who's passed through the heavens, Jesus, the son of God, let us hold fast our confession. So that is his deity. He is the son of God who's passed through the heavens, emphasizing his divine heavenly nature as intercessor and advocate to the father on behalf of us. What a wonderful thought when you grasp that. The fact that there's nothing I can do with, within myself to get myself right before God and go to heaven. But it's all because of what Jesus has done. The only thing that I have to do, it's all been done at Calvary, but the only thing I have to do is accept him. And when I accept him and his sacrifice for my sins and trust him, he is my savior. And when God sees me, he sees Christ in me. Christ in you, the hope of glory, Colossians tells us. In, chapter, in, in verse 15 and 16, we see Christ's humanity. It says there in verse 15, we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses. Basically saying that Jesus is not a high priest that is so aloof, who doesn't know what we're going through, that there's some distant God that we worship. No, God came to flesh and can sympathize with our weaknesses. It says there in this verse, he was in all points tempted as we are. He was tempted throughout his earthly life. The same circumstances, the same situations, the same temptations that bombard us day after day also assaulted Jesus when he lived on this earth. He saw, he heard, he felt all those trials, all those temptations throughout his life. But unlike us who are sinners, who need a savior, Jesus Christ did not sin. He did not sin in thought. He did not sin in word. He did not sin in deed because he was God. And if he had sinned, he couldn't have been our savior. But thankfully, though he was tempted, he never sinned. He was tested. He never sinned. He's the perfect son of God. Because of his genuine experiences as a real human, Jesus can sympathize with our weaknesses. He has been tested as we are tested. 
He has been weak as we are weak. He has suffered as we suffer. And he has come through it victoriously. Rose from the dead. Ascended into heaven. And such he is able to offer us grace if we draw near to him. There in verse 16 it says, So let us hold fast our confession. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace. That we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. As the perfect man who identified with us completely. He is a sympathetic high priest for us. As the perfect God who knows our weaknesses completely. He is an able healer. As the incarnate God man. Jesus Christ is both willing and able to give us mercy in the time of need. So here's the application. Here's the takeaway. Knowing this. Knowing the fact that Jesus Christ is superior. And what he did because of who he is. Because of what he's done at Calvary. Here's the application. Are we submitting to his healing touch through the surgery of the word? He uses the word of God to do surgery to expose us. And we see, we see a mirror of ourselves as it concerns our sin. There's nothing that I can do to save myself. How can I do this? And he, he showed us through his word what he has done for us. So we have to choose to accept him. And after we accept him, Knowing that he is our high priest, knowing that he 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 knows where we're at. And it, it show that's a comforting verse to me, because no matter what what's going on in this world, what's going on in my life, Jesus Christ is enough. And he's going to save me. So therefore, let me go. Let me come boldly. Let's go boldly to the throne of grace. I can draw near to God because of Jesus Christ. That's a wonderful truth. I can come to him any time I want to with my burdens, with my problems, with my needs. With my frustrations. He gives us mercy. He gives us grace. The same grace. The same faith that got you started. Is the same that gets you through this life. Through this. He's inviting us to come. Rest in him. Through this he's allowed to work in us. And grow us to draw near to him. Draw near to his church. Draw near to his spirit. Hey listen. Jesus Christ is superior. What a great thought. What a great verse. This key verse of Hebrews. Hope this was a blessing to you. Hope this was an encouragement to you this evening. Hey, have a great evening, great rest of the week, great weekend. We want to invite you to uh, join us here at Bethlehem Baptist if you're in the area. Uh, we want to have a great service on Sunday. We want to honor the veterans. Have a great service. Uh, Sunday school is at 9 and the service is at 1030 uh, Sunday morning. Looking forward to a good Lord's Day coming up. Hope you guys have a great evening. God bless you. Thanks once again for tuning in.